Hi everyone, Eva here. I am so happy to be here with you today. I have a video that I think you're going to enjoy because it's one that can only be made with a few years behind you so that you can look back and see what mistakes I've made and how would I do things differently now knowing what I know. I wish I had known then what I know now, as the saying goes, right? So I'm almost, uh, I'm just about to turn six years raw vegan. So the first thing that I, that I did back then that I, that I wish I hadn't was obsess. I obsessed a lot. And please don't. I mean, it's easier said than done. People do obsess. We, when we get into something, we just get really into it, right? And we, we just read it and eat it and think it and dream it. And it's just, you know, that's how I was. That's how I am in general in life. I just really get into something and I really sink my teeth into it. And I just almost lose myself a little bit. And that's what I did with raw foods. To the detriment of my relationships, I think that I became so hyper-focused that I lost sight of the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that health is more than just the food we eat. And I became so obsessed with the food that I did not realize how important other things were to for my wellness, for, for my health in general. I probably one of the things that I did was I, some friendships sort of like suffered from it. Thankfully, my relationship with my husband survived it. It thanks to him because honestly, if I had been with someone like I was then, I don't know that I would have been able to get through it because it was just all I thought about, all I talked about, I was just obsessed. And so, yeah, I think other things are important too when you're trying to heal and keeping a good positive mindset, your relationships with others, your community, your exercise, the air you breathe, the water you drink, all of that was important, but the food was the main focus. And the, the food doesn't heal you, your body heals itself. Your body heals itself when you get out of its way. When you stop putting in the foods that are harming you, your body actually has a chance to, to regenerate and to repair and to recharge and to cleanse and to detox. But the way I went about it was just so militant. And I realize a lot of you are at that stage where you are obsessed with it. And I understand that that's a process you go through. But my advice would be to start seeing the forest through the trees rather than just being hyper-focused on the food, what's in front of you. Just try and look around and expand your view to see that the health of your relationships and your family and, and yourself and your community and everything else, it's, it's, a, it's bigger than just the food you're eating. Another mistake that I think I made was that I probably had too big of a goal. And I know that most of you think that 100% is the way to go. You have to go 100%. And there's a lot of truth to that, especially at the beginning for healing, for cleansing, for relearning for letting go of your food addictions. I get that. And sometimes that is necessary. But I, I, in my coaching, I come across people and it, it just depends on your personality, right? I, I come across people that have, the, they're eating the standard American diet and they're telling me that they wanna go 100% raw and they wanna do tomorrow. I failed again and I've tried so many times and I can't seem to get it right. And I think that's because their goal where they're at and where they're going, the, the, the gap, the bridge is too much. And so I, I always, it's almost like when those people that have the New Year's resolutions and they're like, right tomorrow, I'm running five miles and I'm doing uh, weights for 30 minutes and I'm doing a yoga class for one hour in the afternoon. And I'm pretty sure you're not doing that because you're a couch potato today. And what you're describing to, that you're gonna to do tomorrow is a highly active person. I think the best way to go would be to say, tomorrow I'm gonna to walk for 20 minutes. And then the next day I'm gonna walk for, I'm gonna do that for a week and then I'm gonna walk for 30 and then, and then you build up on that. And so you make bite-sized goals. 
you make bite-sized goals achievable so that the, the longer goal you have, it's, it's feasible because you're going into bite size, you know, little, little bits at a time moving towards your goal. And I think for some people, not everyone, but for some people, this is a much better way to go as far as how to achieve where you want to go. You want to go hundred percent or you want to, unless you're dealing with something very, you have the constraints of it, that you're very, very, very sick. And it's like, you got to pull all the guns out and you, you, okay. So I'm not generalizing here. There are specific needs and times and places to do things differently. But generally speaking, if you're wanting to clean up your diet, feel better, do better, uh, get your energy back, sleep better, have beautiful skin again you want to just have the energy to be with your kids all day you all the things that people look to raw food for i think the best way to do it is in bite-sized pieces and what i did at the beginning was balls to the walls which in my particular case you know my personality yeah i'm one of those people that the all or nothing kind of thing but i wish now i had been more cognizant of how much easier it might have been on me and the people around me maybe to to do a little by little what i tell my clients is like okay do um, start with juicing every day or start with a smoothie every day let's build on that and then let's do a juice a smoothie and a salad every day and let's build on that and so it depends on like i said what you're dealing with and what your goals are i just wish i hadn't been so regimented basically yes if i had to do it all over again i would be a lot less inclined to do it all do it now do it perfectly because that's another thing that i that i wish i could if i were to do it again i wouldn't be so obsessed with perfection this perfection that i just i was so hard on myself and uh, there's a time and a place again for doing your very, very, very best. I'm not saying that there isn't, but I was to the point of, like I said, obsession and the perfection, it really got me down. Really having to do everything so perfectly, which I did for many years, really got me down. I was really hard on myself for that. Why? there is no need for that so again let go of being perfect you're going to do your best every day the important thing is that you keep moving forward that you keep doing better than the day before and allow yourself to have a bad moment now i'm not saying okay you go ahead and 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 you really fall off the wagon and you're just you're you're doing things that are not consistent with your goals and the things you know you're doing things consistently with what you want to achieve then yeah look at that it's like what am i doing why am i sabotaging constantly this is a very complex sort of issue because yeah sometimes oh i did my best did you really um if you keep sort of tripping on the same same challenge over and over you got to look a little deeper what really is going on are you really doing your best so th this is a complex thing but again I wish I hadn't been so hard on myself as far as being perfect all the time, which I am a perfectionist and I am someone who, who does this and this is not serving me in life in general, it's not serving me. So I wish also if I had to do it all over again, I had been more open-minded. I drank the Kool-Aid, the raw vegan, the raw vegan Kool-Aid to the point of thinking if someone went back or someone fell off the wagon or someone got sick on it. Like I know people that have gotten sick as raw vegans or people that have had cancer as raw vegans, people that have had their colons removed as raw vegans. My mentality then was, oh, they did it wrong. You know, how persnickety is this diet that you do a little too much fat and, and you, you're doing it wrong. I, I wish I had been more cognizant of how deep the brainwashing goes. And I know this is going to be very controversial, but hear me out. I think it's important to, to stay open-minded. Okay, sometimes you might have to, and I talked about this in some of my other videos, sometimes you might have to go to the doctor. Sometimes not absolutely everything can get possibly healed not everything has a solution not everything can get solved sometimes sometimes things take a turn for the worst and you might have to pull 
tools from your toolbox that you hadn't intended in using. I think it's important to to go to the doctor when you need to go to the doctor. And I think um, I don't go to the doctor ever, so that's cheeky coming from me. I avoid doctors, but this is something that I would have done in the past too. I would have, but now I'm at a place in my life where I'm a little bit more uh, willing to accept outside advice to and look at it and ultimately most of the times I'm like no thanks but I'm more open-minded now and I and I know this is not a popular thing in the raw vegan communities like our lifestyle is it this is it there's nothing outside of it this this solves every problem sometimes your your path or maybe God's plan I don't know it's just it's just different and you can't solve everything with this diet. You can't fix it all with this diet. And I think that's something that I have come to accept too. Sometimes there are things outside of our control and we need to be okay with that. And we need to be, we need to just be more open-minded is what I'm trying to say. There's definitely more to health than just the food and the thoughts we entertain and what's in our hearts. And this is something also that I overlooked. And this is something that I, I comes with maturity, comes with age, especially your mindset. Your mindset is like number one. If you have the mindset of I'm going to heal, your mindset is first and foremost. Another thing that I wish I had been more cognizant of was this overeating. And I know there's many reasons why we overeat. Most of the times is this emotional attachment we have to food. We've just gone through a massive transition and we get to overeat. I witness it all the time. Raw food is stuffing themselves, stuffing their faces with food. And I did it myself. So I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just saying that I wish I had been more aware of the fact that I was emotionally eating versus eating for, for nutrients, eating for calories. I wish I had not overeaten so much because I think that impeded and that slowed down my healing, my gut healing in, in particular. And I know my digestion suffered for it. Now, I'm not saying if you're going through this stage, I'm not shaming you and saying don't do it because I did it myself I'm just saying maybe be aware of it and that could be the first step in in actually going through some processes more efficiently if not faster and if you have to blend something in order to eat it that's too much food and this is not popular either like if you're having a smoothie and it's about that big and you're drinking that um, if, if you were to take the components of that smoothie, if you were to take all the ingredients out, would you be able to sit there and eat them? Would you be able to sit and eat the, the dates, all the bananas, all the, you know, whatever else you put into that giant or gigantic smoothie? If the answer is no, that's too much for you. And you will eventually find your way and you will realize you do not need to overeat like that. But I, again, I just, I wasn't, it wasn't even on my radar. I was just stuffing myself. I had to feel satiated, which was really hard for me to do at first. And I wish I had been more aware of that. That I wanna leave you with a final thought here. And that is that this is something that has come as a, not so much of a recent realization, but again, with age, with time passing. And that is that, your body has a remarkable ability to adapt. The human body can adapt to eating McDonald's and cheeseburgers and pizza and people live. And your body has a remarkable ability to adapt to this lifestyle too. Your body will adapt. Your body's a highly adaptable machine, right? What's important to know is that just because your body has adapted doesn't mean you're thriving. Just because you have a lot of energy, which is sometimes overstimulation from the food you're eating because you're eating too much of one food, doesn't mean you're thriving. I think it's very, very important to, uh, how shall I say this, understand that in order to know that you're doing very well, 
you have to dig a little deeper and not just go by how amazing, amazing you feel. And I'm not saying you're not feeling amazing. I'm just saying, take for instance, a 24 hour fast for 24 hours. You're doing, drinking only water. See how you feel at the end of that, that period of time. See how well you get through it. If you get through your 24 hours on water only, fine you're just a little hungry of course your stomach is shrinking and you feel like mm, you're, you're looking forward to your dinner tomorrow or whatever it is okay great if you however are having a really hard time not eating for even a small window of those 24 hours and if you are struggling big time and you just cannot even make it to the 24 hours then revisit your diet a little bit and see where you might be overeating you might be eating too much fruit again not popular i know that or maybe you might be eating too many calories or maybe you might need to eat more protein plant protein that is maybe you need to be juicing more greens you know just just go back and this is something that i didn't do i had this this plan and this was it and this was what i was going to eat of everything and and so uh, later on is when i've adjusted you know because i i had to i'm like okay well i have to i'm eating too much of this i, I need to eat more of that as i've aged I've, my needs have changed too and so see if you are you know if you're willing to do that see if you can then pinpoint areas where you might have to switch up things a little bit see if that makes a difference for instance if you fast and you for 24 hours and you have a really really hard time you might need to have a little less sugar in your diet and maybe you don't have those big jumps of uh, sugar highs and lows or you might be needing more protein which a lot of the time solves a lot of problems which has been my case i've needed more protein and so you know be willing to adjust correct or be willing to don't think you know everything don't think that the plan is the plan is the plan till the end be willing to to change and switch things up as needed okay so i hope this video has helped some of you i've done my best to put forth what's in my heart what's in my mind I know a lot of you watch my videos and you haven't subscribed so if you haven't please do so because it really helps my channel I really appreciate you leaving me a comment if you have any other thing you would like to add to this conversation and also don't forget to give me a thumbs up I really appreciate you guys being there thank you so much and I will see you in my next video Bye.